Hi, everyone. This is Pastor Sturdivant. Thank you for joining us for worship today. I don't know about you, but I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Whether you're a first time friend or a returning member, it's been a while since we've been in church together. So there are a few things that I want to make you aware of just before service begins. COVID-19 protocols will be in place during this in-person worship. Please keep your mask over your nose and mouth at all times and remain six feet apart between you and those not living in your household. As you enter the sanctuary, there is a QR code you can scan with your smartphone that will provide you with a link to today's order of service. As you peruse the program, please make sure that you mute your phone before worship begins. If you must use the restroom, please use the restroom closest to where you entered the sanctuary. If you're in the multi-purpose center, use the restrooms inside the gym. As you know, giving is a part of worship. If you plan to give during worship, please drop your gift in one of the secure slots around the sanctuary as you enter or exit the building. If you're in the multi-purpose center, a giving receptacle will be available as you exit. Once the benediction is given, please wait for instructions from the ushers on how and when to exit. Brothers and sisters, I am thrilled that you decided to join us for in-person worship today because there's something special that happens when the saints of God come together. Welcome home. Let's have church.
Hi everyone, this is Pastor Sturdivant. Thank you for joining us for worship today. I don't know about you, but I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Whether you're a first time friend or a returning member, it's been a while since we've been in church together. So there are a few things that I wanna make you aware of just before service begins. COVID-19 protocols will be in place during this in-person worship. Please keep your mask over your nose and mouth at all times and remain six feet apart between you and those not living in your household. As you enter the sanctuary, there is a QR code you can scan with your smartphone that will provide you with a link to today's order of service. As you peruse the program, please make sure that you mute your phone before worship begins. If you must use the restroom, please use the restroom closest to where you entered the sanctuary. If you're in the multi-purpose center, use the restrooms inside the gym. As you know, giving is a part of worship. If you plan to give during worship, please drop your gift in one of the secure slots around the sanctuary. Watching the singers sing. But the singers would sing one part and the people. Yeah. I can't hear too good. The, the singers would sing one part and the people would sing in response. And, and it's important for us to understand. Yes. And we're going to talk about it in a second. It's important for us to understand that church has changed. But it's also important for us to understand that God has not. And if we've come to worship, I say if we have come to worship, yes. we won't mind worship in a few minutes before 10. Because God is worthy a few minutes before 10. From the rising of the sun, I thought I'd have more help. To the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome into the sanctuary of the Springfield Baptist Church on this another Lord's Day. This is a day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. We thank and praise God for each and every one of you who are worshiping with us via virtual means. If you are on our stream spot, our YouTube or our Facebook channel, we give God praise and thanks and glory for you. As you are watching, we pray that you would Subscribe, like, comment, and share. Subscribe, like, comment, and share. Subscribe, like, comment, 
and share. Amen and amen. We're grateful this morning, not just for our virtual audience, but for all of those who press their way to be a part of the in-person worship experience today. I'm grateful today to be joined by some wonderful people from the Springfield Church who are here, amen, who've come to worship the name of the Lord today. Anybody come to worship the name of the Lord? Anybody just glad to be in the number one more time? Come on, rest on your feet. If you're glad to be in the number one more time, will you stand with me and help me give God all the praise, the glory, and the honor? Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. I can't hear too good. He is worthy to be praised, and he is worthy to be adored. Amen and amen. While you are standing, let's pause now and have a word of invocation. Ask God's blessings over our time together. We sense, feel, believe, and know that God is already here. Amen. I said we sense, feel, believe, and know that the Lord is already here. Amen. Somebody say, how do you know, preacher, the Lord is already here? I brought him with me. Amen. I didn't wait for nobody to pump me up, stir me up. Amen. The Lord's been good to me. And because he's been so good, the least I can do is open my mouth, clap my hands, and give God my praise. The Bible says, clap your hands, O ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Y'all better leave me alone today. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the blessing of this day. We thank you that you're already here. We don't have to invoke or invite you, God. You're already here. We feel and sense your presence. And God, because we know that you are already here, we simply say, have your way. Do what you need to do to get the glory. God, throw your weight around. Move from heart to heart and breast to breast. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that we all experience your glory and your power today. And because of your glory and your power, we would be changed to be like what you called and assigned us to be. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, your anointing would saturate this place. I pray in the name of Jesus, your rebuke upon anything that's not like you. And pray, God, that simply you would move in our midst. And give us, God, the discernment to know where you're moving so we can meet you there. We give you the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Put those blessed hands together. Give God the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Our responsive reading this morning is number 598. It is the Lord's Supper. How appropriate is that reading for us today as we celebrate the Lord's Supper on the first Sunday of September. Anybody excited to be here on the first Sunday of September? Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Number 598, the Lord's Supper. It is on your worship screens and we will read it responsively. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. After the same manner, he also took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, 
tarry one for another all together. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. We're excited this morning to be able to welcome and have, amen, the ministry of music, amen, by our uh, praise team. They're going to bless our hearts in song. Receive them by saying amen.
Hallelujah. Anybody know that the Lord reigns forever? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you so much. Praise to you. You blessed our hearts. Amen and amen. We're excited this morning to be able to welcome any visitors who are visiting with us uh, in the virtual space. If you're in the virtual space and you're a first-time friend or virtual visitor, amen, if you would put it in the chat where you're visiting from, I promise you some of the wonderful people from the Springfield Baptist Church will reach out to you and show you some virtual love at this time, amen. We are grateful for all of our friends and visitors, amen, who continually support the Springfield Baptist Baptist Church. Amen. We give God thanks and praise for you, not only for them, but if we have any first-time friends in the sanctuary, if you're a first-time friend in the sanctuary, will you stand? Will you stand? Will you stand? First-time friend, first-time friend, first-time friend. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. Amen. We know that many other places you could have gone, but we are excited that the Lord decided to send you our way. Amen. Normally, we would pass the peace and show you a hug of love and all that good stuff. We can't do that because of COVID, so we're just going to wave at you. Amen. We're just going to wave at you. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise for our virtual, our first-time friends one more time. Amen and amen. At this time, we're preparing our hearts for the Springfield Spotlight. Watch and be blessed. Today on the Springfield Spotlight. Attention members and ministries, you are encouraged to submit content for the next Springfield Chronicles. Consider sharing an encouraging testimony of God's grace and goodness in your life. Do you have a poetic word for God's glory? Are congratulations in order for a happening at work? Ministry leaders, do you want to share how God has blessed and enriched your ministry virtually? These are just a few of the possible reasons we want to hear from you. The submission deadline is Sunday, September 5th, so please submit your content to newsletter at springfieldbaptistchurch.com. The children's ministry upcoming Bible study is scheduled as following for in-person and virtual Zoom options. September 7th will have in-person and a virtual Zoom option. September 21st will be virtual via Zoom. October 5th will have in-person and a virtual Zoom option. October 19th will be virtual via Zoom. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Education Day will be recognized on Sunday, September 19th. This year's theme will be Blessed Through Instruction, Educating, Cultivating, and Developing Your God-Given Talents. The scripture will be Proverbs 16:20. Whoever gives heed to instruction prospers, and blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Small businesses at the church outing, September the 18th, Lake Benson. That's so cool. We're spending our black dollars for black businesses. Yep, creating our own mini SBC Wall Street. And what are some of the things that you offer? Art for sale. Plant-based skincare. Delicious treats. Build black. Bang black. Teach black. Give black. Buy black. <laughs> Remember, September 18th, Lake Benson Park. May the peace of the Lord go with you throughout the week until we meet again. Be blessed. Amen and amen. We thank and praise God for all that he has done and all that he is doing. Amen here at the Springfield Baptist Church. I also want to pause uh, quickly before we move to our time of giving. I want to pause quickly to thank you uh, for last week. Amen. Thank you for last week. Amen. For giving pastor the opportunity to catch his breath. Amen. Amen. I appreciate those of you who pressed your way to be here and didn't uh, my friend, the Reverend Dr. Sherman Tribble, do a phenomenal job. Amen. On last week, he is a preacher par excellence, and I Give God all the praise, the glory, and the honor for him. So thank you, Springfield, for being spiritually mature enough to know that pastor needs a Sabbath as well. Amen? Amen. And uh, that might be the first one, but it won't be the last one. Amen, lights and amen, carpet. 
<laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. It is time to give, and we realize and recognize that it is in and through our giving that we are blessed. As you know by now, we're not able uh, to pass the plate. We're not able, amen, to have you to get up and march. Amen. But at, on your way into the sanctuary, if you are in person on the way into the sanctuary, there are secure slots that have been stationed around uh, the campus here in the sanctuary and in the multi-purpose building where you will be able to drop your gift off on your way into the sanctuary or out of the sanctuary. Amen. So we give God thanks and praise for all of those of you who are spiritually mature enough, amen, to continue to give even in the midst of a global pandemic. If you are here today, amen, if you're watching us today uh, online, you know by now that there are four ways you can give here at the Springfield Baptist Church. There are four ways that you can give, and those four ways are on your screen right now. You can give online. You can text to give. Text the word GIVE to 919-584-9070. You can mail your gift to the church here at 4309 Auburn Nightdale Road. Or if you just want to drop it off, you can drop it in one of the secure slots around the sanctuary. Amen and amen. Let's pause now and pray a blessing over those who have given. Pray a blessing over those who intend to give. In Jesus' name, let's pray. Father. We just want to thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to give. God, we don't want to rush this moment. You've been good to us. You've blessed us, God, to be able to be sustained and gainfully employed. And God, even those of us who may still be looking for jobs, God, you've kept food on the table and clothes on our back and a roof over our head. And God, we've come now to give back to you a portion of that which you've given to us. The truth is, God, we, we already know we can't beat you giving. So God, we pray that you would accept these seeds in the name of Jesus. Your Bible says you give seed to the sower. So accept these seeds in the name of Jesus. And we pray, God, that they would be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom and the destruction of Satan's. God, we simply pray that you would be glorified. We thank you because we know that as we give, it makes us more like you. You loved us so much that you gave to us. Help us, God, to love you so much that we give right back. Bless the gift and the giver. God, even bless those who have a heart to give but not the means. And I pray in the name of Jesus that by the time we do this again, that God, you will have increased them to be able to participate in this part of worship. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for what you have doing and are, what you have done and are doing. Continue to bless and keep us in Jesus' name. We pray, Amen and Amen. Thank you so much for your liberal giving. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen and amen. Our praise team is coming back now to bless our hearts in the ministry of music. Let's receive them by saying amen. amen. Elijah 
declaring the word of the Lord. These are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. These are the days of great trial, of famine, darkness, and sword. Still with the voice of the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Be are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. These are the days of great trials, of famine, darkness, and sore. Still with a voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. The dry bones becoming as flesh. These are the days of your servant David, rebuilding the temple of praise. These are the days of the harvest. Notice the fields are all white in your world. Yet with the labors in the vineyard, declaring the way of the Lord, be riding. Like Jehovah, there's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Sing. There's no God like Jehovah. No God. There's no God like Jehovah. No God. There's no God like Jehovah. No God.
how I love Jesus.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Is that anybody's testimony this morning? I can't hear too good. Love you more anything. Ezra chapter 3. Jesus. Love you more. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to move on. And the reason why I'm, I'm getting stuck is because I'm remembering that I didn't love him first. Remembering that he first loved me. Even in the midst of all of my mess ups and my mistakes, my shortcomings, the times that I went left and he told me to go right, the times that I did what he told me not to do. Every time he kept extending grace and mercy to me, when I didn't deserve it. I promise you, if you stop to think about it, you'll feel some kind of way. I promise you, if you stop to think about it, something will bubble up in your spirit and you'll just want to say, Lord, I just want to thank you because you first loved me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why I can sing it. Worship and adore. Just want to tell you. Love you more. Mm -hmm. Ezra chapter 3. Will you stand with me if you have it? continue in our series of sermons called Let's Have Church. And I hope this series of sermons has been blessing you. We've been trying to establish order and expectancy around what it is that the church is becoming. Amen and amen. Ezra chapter 3. And I want to begin reading with verse number 10. I would encourage you when you get a, a chance uh, to read uh, this entire chapter of Ezra chapter 3. I want to begin reading with verse number 10. And I will be reading today from the NIV. Ezra chapter 3. Verse number 10, there the Bible says, when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments and with trumpets and the Levites, the son of Asaph with cymbals, took their places to praise the Lord as prescribed by David, king of Israel. Verse 11, with praise and thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord, he is good. His love toward Israel endures forever. 
And all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Verse number 12. But many of the older priests and Levites and family heads who had seen the former temple wept aloud when they saw the foundation of this temple being laid, while many others shouted for joy. And no one could distinguish the sound of the shouts of joy from the sound of weeping, because the people made so much noise, and the sound was heard far away. Heads bowed, eyes closed, let's pray. God, me, oh, thy great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land, I am weak. Thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, feed us until we want no more. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Before you're seated, will you do me a favor? Look at a neighbor even through your mask and tell them, Pastor is going to preach about when church changes. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. That's what we're going to talk about today, when church changes changes this is a mature sermon for a mature people God never promised that church would not change What he did promise is that the church would not lose. Upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We brothers and sisters are connected to the only living institution and organism in the world that cannot be defeated. Every other thing you are connected to has at some point or another lost. If you're a sports fan, talk back to me if you can. I ain't going to call no names right here. Your team has lost some games. If you are a fan of your company, no doubt your company has lost some revenue and some employees. If you're a fan of the stock market, no doubt you've lost some gains. If you're a fan of a particular TV show, no doubt that show has been canceled or ch characters have changed. The Church of God is the only living organism in all the world that has not, will not, cannot, and must not lose. But in spite of that, Jesus never promised that it wouldn't change. Let's, let's, let's take a history lesson, if you will, and look at some of the ways in which the church has changed. In Acts chapter 2, the Bible tells us that they begin meeting daily in the temple courts. And when the people found out that they were preaching Jesus, they ultimately got kicked out of the temple courts. And after they couldn't go into the temple courts anymore, uh, they, they started to go into the synagogues. And Acts chapter 19 is an example of the people of God going into the synagogues to be able to lift up Jesus. But as you know, when the apostle Paul started going into the synagogues uh, to preach Jesus, somebody would always kick him out for preaching that Jesus is the son of God. And once they were no longer able to meet in the temple, and once they were no longer able to meet in the synagogue they started meeting in people's houses 
The book of Philemon tells us about a church that met in Onesimus's house. The book of James tells us, brothers and sisters, that they, they moved from, from, from the temple to the synagogue. And then once they're kicked out of the synagogues, they have to meet in people's houses. And then the book of James tells us in chapter 1 that the church was scattered abroad to the point where the church had to go underground. These are just some first century examples of the ways that church has changed. But as African Americans, brothers and sisters, you, you know something about church changing. I can't hear too good. I said, you know something about church changing. That, that's a part of our history in the late 1790s when Richard Allen and Absalom Jones got fed up with how they were being treated at the St. George's Episcopal Church in Philadelphia. They saw church changing and decided that they would start their own church, the African Methodist Episcopal Church, which becomes the oldest black church in America. They, 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 they realized that church changed when our forefathers and foremothers who were slaves weren't welcome in certain churches that didn't stop them from having church they just changed the location so they would steal away to the banks of the river. I wish I had a witness. And, and, and they would still give God praise down by the riverside because they understood that God never promised that church wouldn't change. He just promised that church wouldn't lose. Okay, let me bring it real close to some of y'all looking at me cross-eyed. Uh, uh, Springfield, even in our own history, we've come to understand that church sometimes changes. Yes, we have. We, we, we didn't start in here. In, 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 this, in this lush sanctuary auditorium with 1,250 seat capacity with cushions on the seats and carpeted floor. Talk back to me if you can. Springfield started under a bush arbor. Outside. I can't hear nobody. Because we understood that even if church had to change, it still wouldn't lose. We, we, we didn't have our own worship place. For several years when we first were founded, we had to worship in Pharaoh's workshop. I can't hear too good. But even though we had to worship in a place that was not a dedicated church, we understood that even though church might change, uh, God remained the same. And we were determined to worship regardless of where we had to. Even under Reverend Essex Blake, when the, when the log cabin was constructed, we, we, we decided that God was still worthy of our worship even if we had to switch locations and then brothers and sisters a few years later when the straight up and down structure was built in the early 1900s we continued to worship God and then watch this church changed again because we moved from two Sundays to every Sunday I can't hear nobody and, and even though we had to move from two Sundays to every Sunday we still gave God our best because we realized that even though church might change God is still the same and even when we move from cross the street to this side of the street when the fellowship hall was our worship place we still kept worshiping God and when we outgrew the fellowship hall we moved in here and still kept worshiping God and when we thought that we needed more space we moved to the multi-purpose center and still kept worshiping all I'm trying to tell you is that even though church might change God is still the same Because he never promised that church wouldn't change. He only promised that the church wouldn't lose. And in the midst of the church changing, the church is still winning. How else do you explain people joining a church that they haven't even visited? How else do you explain people joining a church when they can't even come down here because the doors of the church were closed because of the pandemic? The church is still winning. You are, brothers and sisters, connected 
to something that is larger, stronger, and more lasting than you. And despite all of the changes that we've had to go through, in spite all uh, of the machinations and things that we've had to endure, especially within these past 18 months or so, we still celebrate God because in the midst of it, God promised that the church, even though it might change, it will not lose. In essence, brothers and sisters, that's the focus of my Sunday school lesson this morning. Because that's what's happening in Ezra chapter 3. In Ezra 3, when you read it for your own, your own time, you'll find some things that are very interesting. The Bible tells us that at this particular point, brothers and sisters, about 50,000 devoted Jews have returned from Babylonian captivity to Jerusalem. King Cyrus of Persia has released them and let them go home. And so when they get home, the first thing that they decided to do, brothers and sisters, is to build the altar of sacrifice. They, they decide, brothers and sisters, that the first thing that we ought to do is to build the altar of sacrifice. They, they, they decided that the first thing that we ought to do, even when things are changing and things are in flux, uh, even when church has changed, they decide that the first thing that we ought to do is to build the altar of sacrifice. Brothers and sisters, I just came to remind you that's good advice this morning, that when church changes, uh, we need to do like the ancient Hebrews did and what we need to do is keep the first things first brothers and sisters what they decide is uh, that they are going to rebuild the altar of sacrifice first they rebuild the altar of sacrifice first because uh, they understand that if there is no altar there can be no sacrifice and if there is no sacrifice there can be no communion with God and so they decide uh, that the first thing that we got to do uh, is to make sure that our relationship with God is is right first and so we got to build the altar of sacrifice uh, before we go another step further they they decide that in spite of all of the things uh, that might be changing around them uh, they decide we don't want to lose uh, our communion with God we don't want to lose uh, our relationship with God we don't want to lose uh, our closeness with God uh, and so they decide to put the first things first uh, and they decide to build uh, an altar of sacrifice communing with God uh, was so important to them uh, that they put that even before uh, building their own houses even before uh, building their own personal wealth even before uh, prioritizing their own personal comfort uh, they decide they're going to put the house of the Lord first uh, and I came to remind somebody brothers and sisters uh, that when things change uh, when circumstances come up when problems uh, arise and life throws you a curveball when the church has to change we still got to keep the first things first brothers and sisters if you have not learned anything else during the past 18 months if you have not learned anything else during this pandemic time if you have not learned anything else during this time that we have been a part I hope you have learned how to put God first. I hope you have learned, if you haven't learned anything else, how to put God first. Let, let me see if I can make it make sense, brothers and sisters. Watch this. God had to shut the whole world down to remind you that he's more important than AAU, that he is more important than you going golfing, that he is more important than you going on a picnic, that he is more important that you enjoying this or that. God had to shut the whole world down to remind you that you ought to put God first. Yeah. Wasn't nothing else we could do. Okay, y'all acting like y'all don't remember. You couldn't go to no restaurant, they wasn't open. Couldn't go to no movie theater, it was closed. Your sports teams told y'all, much as y'all love the sports teams, they told y'all, we'll see you when we see you. Ain't nobody talking back to me. And here's what's happened. Now that the restrictions have been eased, and now that people have a little bit more freedom of movement and can do sort of what they want to do, 
We've fallen right back into the same routine of giving God leftovers. We need to learn from the example of these ancient Jews to put God first. Can, can, can anybody identify with the words of Psalm 63 where the psalmist says, Oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee, my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen in thy sanctuary because thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless the Lord while I live and lift my hands in thy name. Somebody here ought to be able to testify with the words of Psalm 63 that God, I'm going to seek you you first I'm gonna put you first because I realize uh, that without you I am nothing uh, and that everything I need you have uh, I'm gonna put you first I'm gonna put you first Lord I'm gonna seek you uh, while you might yet be found I, I, I'm gonna do those things uh, that I need to do to prioritize uh, my relationship with you I'm gonna cut the TV off and spend some time in prayer I'm gonna turn Facebook off and spend some time in your word I'm gonna turn you YouTube ball and get closer to you because I need to put first things first somebody knows that when you put God first it pays off I can't hear too good I said somebody here knows when you put God first it pays off okay that's how I sleep so somebody here knows that when you put God first it pays off. Okay, you don't believe me? I got Bible. I got Bible. I got Bible. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I didn't say it, Sister Hogan. I didn't say it. Jesus said, but seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these other things will be added unto you. The context of what Jesus is saying is that we spend so much time chasing after things but we don't understand that if we chase after God, God will cause things to chase after us and if we put God first you will never be disappointed when you put God when church changes Put first things first. But not only that, when church changes, brothers and sisters, secondly, remember the foundation. That, that's what's happening in the verses we read to you. They are laying a foundation. And that's why, brothers and sisters, church is important. That, that's why you need to press your way. I can't hear too good. That, that's why you need to press your way. That, that's, 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 that's the reason why you, you need to join us on Zoom and join us on YouTube and join us in the sanctuary because church is a foundation. And it provides a foundation upon which we can build. Watch, watch this. The text says that the people of God have returned to Jerusalem after the Babylonian captivity. They're about to lay the foundation to rebuild the temple after 50 years it's been destroyed and now it's just a pile of rocks on top of each other and all God's people have gathered back in Jerusalem and they intend to lay the foundation and they intend to lay the foundation right because they understand that it is the first step in their renewal to their relationship with God I love the image of what's happening here they are laying a foundation and laying a foundation brother Brothers and sisters uh, is a very powerful uh, metaphor. Let me see if I can make it make sense. They, they're laying the foundation. They, they don't have any walls. Uh, they, don't, 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 they don't have a roof. They don't have uh, any decorations or any furniture. Uh, but that does not stop them uh, from laying a foundation. You missed it. I'll back it up, rewind it, and say it again. They, they don't have any walls. They don't have uh, a roof. They don't have any furniture. Uh, they don't have any decorations. Uh, they don't have all the accoutrements that would make the temple grandiose and beautiful but they decide in spite of what we don't have we're going to lay a foundation to build on that's important because understand brothers and sisters that no matter what else we do in church 
as things change, we cannot forget the foundation. I'm preaching better than y'all talking back to me. Uh, no, no matter what else we're able to do in church, we cannot forget the foundation. Okay, some, some of y'all are looking at me funny, so let me see if I can make it make sense to you. Somebody might be saying, Brother Preacher, uh, what is the foundation of the church? What exactly is the foundation of the church? I came to remind you, brothers and sisters, uh, that our foundation uh, comes from the life, the lips, and the ministry uh, of Jesus Christ, where he says uh, in Matthew chapter 28 and verse number 19 go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo I am with you always even until the end of the eight I know that that's not a place where a lot of people shout because some people come to church to figure out what they can get out of church but Jesus gives us the foundation of church by helping us to understand that our job is to spread this gospel and it doesn't matter what else we do if we ain't spreading this gospel then our foundation ain't right everything else we do is nice but it only is sustainable if the foundation is right I'm preaching better than y'all talking back to me. The, the, the foundation of church is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The, the foundation of church is the birth, the life, the death, the resurrection, and the second coming of Jesus Christ. I thought I'd have at least two and a half people happy right there. I, I know it's good to have family groups in church, but let's not forget the foundation. I, I know it's good to have programs in church, but let's not forget the foundation. I know it's good to have fellowship in church, but let's not forget the foundation. I know it's good for us to have all kind of ministries that try to meet the needs of people, but let's not forget the foundation. The foundation brothers and sisters is the most important thing and the reason why pastor is preaching about the foundation today is because you ought to be able to celebrate a God that in spite of all of the other things that have gone on if you are in a church where the foundation is sure you can still praise God and you might not be able to come and gather like you used to but is the foundation sure and you might not be able to sing in the choir but is the foundation sure and you might not be able to shake hands with your neighbor but is the foundation sure and you might not be able to come down here and do this that or the third but is the foundation sure if the foundation is sure regardless of what else changes if the foundation is sure then you can build on that Things might change, but is the foundation sure? It, it, is the foundation, Lord have mercy, still intact? It's way too early for me to be this happy. It, is the foundation still intact? I, I, I wondered myself, what was the foundation still intact? And, and then, brothers and sisters, after I did some digging, I, I realized, Lord have mercy, that the foundation was still intact. I, I, I did some digging, some excavating, some archaeological work, if you will, to try and figure out if the foundation was still intact. And when I started digging, you want to know what I found? I, I found that this is a church that is still preaching and teaching and witnessing that Jesus came down through 40 and two burning generations, that he was born of a virgin, that he was born in Bethlehem in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes and placed in a manger because there was no room for him in the end. I found out as I kept digging that we are a church that still preaches that God went about through Jesus preaching and 
and teaching uh, and healing the sick and raising the dead and pointing people back to God and when I found that out I felt good about the foundation I kept on digging and I found out that we are still a church that preaches and teaches uh, that Jesus Christ was arrested uh, on trumped up charges uh, and when I found that out uh, I felt good about the foundation when I kept on digging uh, I found out that we are a church uh, that still preaches uh, that one Friday uh, they marched him up the Via Dolorosa uh, they put a crown of thorns on his head uh, and nailed him to an old rugged cross uh, in a place called Calvary uh, and a spot called Golgotha uh, and when I found that out uh, I felt pretty good about the foundation uh, but I kept on digging uh, and found out that we're still a church uh, that preaches he died uh, I wish I had a witness uh, didn't he die uh, he died uh, but not only did he die uh, we're still a church uh, that preaches early Sunday morning uh, he got up uh, with all power uh, in his hand uh, and when I found that out uh, I felt good about the foundation uh, is there anybody here uh, who can testify and thank God uh, that in the midst of all of the other stuff that changes uh, the gospel the good news uh, is still the same Lord have mercy so there he is a fountain I'm out here now and it's filled with blood and it's drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood they lose all the guilt and stain the dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day and there I though foul as he washed all my sins away can I just say what I'm saying uh, that we ought to still uh, be glad uh, that the blood uh, still works uh, we ought to still uh, be glad uh, that the good news uh, still works uh, we ought to still uh, be glad uh, that Jesus came uh, to save our souls uh, when we couldn't save ourselves uh, somebody here uh, ought to give God praise uh, that this church is a good fountain. When everything else changes in church, hey Sean, we can still be glad that the foundation is intact. Here's the issue. Can I just say what I'm saying? The issue is, we major in the minors and minor in the majors. So we get bent out of shape. If we can't do this, that, or the third in church. And I said it Wednesday night. Mr. Lewis told me to preach about it this morning. I, I said it Wednesday night or Tuesday night. Church ain't about your preferences. Real quiet. I say church is not about your preferences. And when church starts to be about your preferences, it ceases to be church. Instead of you complaining about whether or not you got your way, is the foundation. I told y'all this is a mature sermon for mature people. But, but the good news is, brothers and sisters, is that when church changes, if you put first things first, and if you got a foundation that's intact, the, the beautiful thing about it is, watch this, you ain't got to build the foundation alone. You got a church family. <laughs> you, you ought to thank God that you still got a church family. Okay, let, let, let me help you. Uh, verse number eight of Ezra three. 
gives us specifically who helps to lay the foundation. It tells us that Zerubbabel and, and Jeshua and the rest of the people, the priests and the Levites and all who return from captivity are a part of those who lay the foundation. In other words, watch this. The entire family of faith helped to lay the foundation. You missed it. Okay. The entire family of faith helped to lay the foundation. There was nobody involved who said, y'all get over there and do that. The entire family of faith helped to lay the foundation. Check, check the text. It wasn't Zerubbabel by himself. It wasn't Jeshua by himself. It wasn't the priests or the Levites by themselves. But the Bible says that all who returned helped to lay this foundation. And that's important, brothers and sisters. It's important because uh, what the Bible tells us in verse number three is that the Samaritans, watch this, the Samaritans were in the hills uh, watching to see what the people of God were doing. The, the, the Samaritans, the enemy of God's people, were in the hills watching to see what uh, the family of God was going to do. And, and, and they were standing there watching, watch this, brothers and sisters, because they were waiting for the best time to invade, distract, and attack the people of God. The Samaritans were in the hills watching so that they could find the most opportune time to come down and to attack the people of God. And it would have worked, but the text tells us that the whole company was working together. In other words, brothers and sisters, sisters, uh, they had already decided uh, that we're not out here by ourselves. Uh, can I just say what I'm saying? Uh, they had decided, brothers and sisters, uh, that I got your back uh, and you get my back. Uh, and because I got your back uh, and because you gonna have my back, uh, we're not gonna let the enemy come in uh, and wreak havoc uh, on what it is that God is trying to do. Uh, and brothers and sisters, I wish uh, more church people uh, had the attitude uh, that they they had in Ezra chapter 3. I wish we would put aside competition. I wish we would put aside tattling. I wish we would put aside gossip. I wish we would put aside trying to outshine one another and just come to the point where you say, I got your back and you get my back and because we got each other's back, we're not going to let the enemy come in and wreak havoc in what God is trying to do. And maybe the reason why you can't shout right there is because when you take personal inventory of your life you ain't had nobody's back but I need you to know brothers and sisters that the only way we can become who God has called us to be is for us to be unified and fight against the enemy can I just say what I'm saying you ain't my enemy the devil is I don't hate you I hate the devil is there anybody here who can make the testimony that I'm not fighting you. I'm fighting against the enemy. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. We, we all supposed to be we all supposed to be we supposed to be family. I, I can't hear too good. I said, we all supposed to be, we all supposed to be family. Do you realize, I'm, I'm moving, but do you realize the level of attractiveness of the family of God to this society? Where most children come from broken homes and have never seen a pure example of how family should work? And then come in here and we arguing and yelling and acting foolish towards one another. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I got two minutes, 45 seconds. I'm done. When, when you put first things first, you lay the foundation. When you understand that you're a part of a family, it helps to fortify your faith. I'm closing here. It helps to fortify your, fortify your faith. Verse number 12 is interesting. I'll read it for you. 
because I don't want you to miss it. And this is what drew me to this passage of scripture. I believe this is the reason why the Lord wanted me to preach this. Verse number 12. But many of the older priests and Levites and the family heads who had seen the former temple wept aloud when they saw the foundation of this temple being laid while many others shouted for joy. So let me paint the picture. They're laying the foundation and there's a group of people who are weeping and lamenting. And there's a group of people who are shouting for joy. You missed it. They, they, they are laying the foundation for the temple that was destroyed 50 years earlier. And as they lay this foundation, some of the Bible says the family heads and those who saw the previous temple are weeping and lamenting. And, and those who ain't never seen the old temple was just happy as they could be about any temple. <laughs> so, so, they're upset because God flipped the script and didn't get their permission. They, 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 they felt like Lord, we were minding our own business and the temple was destroyed. And now we got a temple that's not as nice and beautiful and glorious and grand as the old temple was. Here, here's my question. What do you do when God doesn't do what you expect him to do? You, you, you can cry. You can lament. You can be upset. Or... You can fortify your faith and praise God for what he is doing. Let me unpack it. I'm moving. I'm moving. Let me unpack it. I'm in overtime now. Let me unpack it. I'm moving. Because here's the truth. The truth is, <laughs> the, tr the truth is, the only reason why the first temple was destroyed is because they weren't listening to God in the first place. So they are mad and upset because the temple was destroyed. But guess what? They had the opportunity for the temple not to be destroyed if they had repented and listened to God in the first place. So now they're crying over spilled milk, but they the ones that spilled the milk. And the text says that there were those that were crying and there were those that said, in the midst of all that has changed, I still got my praise and I still got my thank you and I still got my Lord, we worship you. Here's the point of the sermon. They praised God not because the foundation that was laid was as glorious as the previous one. But they praised God because they had the same kind of spirit that Mother Thelma Watkins had. <laughs> Y'all saying, that's who? Who is Mother Thelma? I know you, I know, I know you don't know who that is. Uh, she, she's a lady that I had the privilege of pastoring uh, while I was in Reedsville. Uh, Mother Thelma Watkins was, was a lady of elegance and class. Uh, who, as you can imagine, in her later years, uh, just like it does for most of us, our health starts to decline. And so she had uh, began to have problems seeing. She couldn't see well, and, and she had to, to walk on a walker. And she had spent time, brothers and sisters, in, in the ICU on life support. She had spent time in hospice and all this kind of stuff. And, and so uh, she, she had been through a whole lot, y'all. She had been through a whole lot. And uh, every time... I would go through uh, to visit uh, Mother Thelma Watkins. Every time I would go through to see her, I would ask her the same question, and she would give me the same answer. I would say, Mother, Mother Watkins, how are you? And she would say, Pastor, I praise God that things are as well as they are. Yes, 
And I came to ask this morning, is there anybody who has the testimony of Mother Thelma Watkins? No, it ain't like what it used to be. But can you still praise God that things are as well as they are? No, you might not have everything that you want, but can you still praise God that things are as well as they are? Yes, you might have to take the medicine, but can you still praise God that things are as well as they are? No, it might not all be going the way you want it to go, but can you still praise God that things are as well as they are? I, I got more, but I'll quit. Is your faith fortified to the point where you can say, Lord, thank you that things are as well as they are. Can I, can, I, can I say something? I'm closing. Can I say it? I heard a preacher say this and it blessed my heart. He said, denial is not deliverance. It's delusion. Because what we try to do is we try to say, well, you know, I ain't claiming it and I ain't, you know, all this kind of stuff. And instead of saying that, get a mother Thelma Watkins testimony. Lord, I want to thank you. That things are as well as they are. Because when you have the faith that things are as well as they are, it not only fortifies your faith but it also furnishes your future I'm done I'm done I promise I am I told y'all I wasn't going to get y'all the rest I'm done I promise the reason why the younger generation could praise God is because they know God if you let us lay the foundation you ain't going to just leave us in the middle of the project he that hath begun a good work in you <laughs> we're performing unto the day of Christ Jesus all I need you to do is start it cause I know if you start it you got the power to finish whatever you start so when things change in our life when church changes can we put first things first can we hold on to the foundation can we thank God that we still got a family of faith and that even in the midst of it our faith is fortified that things are as well as they are but also know that what we're believing is furnishing for the future that just because God started it doesn't mean he's finished he's got more work to do and can I just speak prophetically really quickly and tell you that I believe that God has more work for the Springfield Baptist Church to do. And I believe that we're going to have a greater witness and greater impact and influence in our community because God has more work for us to do. And even though we had to change some things around and shift some things over, God's not through with us yet. Glory to God. Stand with me. I'm done. Stand with me. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much. Even when church changes, you're still God. The grass withers, flower fades. But the word of the Lord stands forever. God, we thank you for that. Thank you, God, that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. You told us to everything under the heaven, there's a time and a season. And God, we're in this season of change and transition, but God, you authored it. So keep us through the changes. 
so that we can be what you've called and assigned us to be. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that you are the one constant that will not change. And because you will not change, we cling to you. You never promised us, promised us, Lord, that church wouldn't change. You just promised us that it would not lose. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you that the gates of hell cannot prevail against your church. So, Lord, I don't know how you do what you do, but take these words, make them a seed, plant them into our hearts and our minds that we may grow from it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you're here today without the Lord Jesus, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord and you shall be saved. It's just that simple. We as church folks are the ones that complicate salvation. Biblical salvation is simple. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. If you have never accepted Jesus in your heart. You want to do it today. We offer Christ to you. If you're a backslider and you began to think that right is wrong and wrong is right, we offer Christ to you. Our altar workers are coming now. We offer Christ to you. If you're here and you say, Brother Preacher, I've been checking this church out and I believe God wants to plant me in this area of the vineyard to be a tree of righteousness, we offer Christ to you. Glory to his name. Whether you're in the sanctuary or in the multi-purpose center, whether you are watching online, we offer Christ to you. I promise you that he is the one who can meet every need and make every way. I thought I'd have a witness there. I said he is the one who can meet every need and make every way. And we offer him to you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Is there one? If you feel that the Lord uh, moving on your heart to join this church, you feel the Lord moving on your heart to, to rededicate, you feel the Lord moving on your heart to give your heart to Jesus. If you are in our in-person audience, if you are an in-person worshiper, amen, will you raise your hand? If you raise your hand, you raise your hand. If you're here or in the multi-purpose center, will you raise your hand and our altar workers will assist you, amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. If you are online and you are feeling and sensing the presence of God right now, amen, to make one of those three decisions, glory to God, to make one of those three decisions, will you do me a favor? Will you bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat this prayer of repentance after me? If you've never accepted Jesus in your heart and you feel led to, to begin today a relationship with him, Bow your head and close your eyes and repeat this prayer of repentance after me. Dear Lord, I confess that I am a sinner and I need you to save me. Come into my heart. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus, thank you for being Savior of my soul. And now I need you to be Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, if you are online and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, we want to hear about it. We want to know about it. And there are some ways that you can let us know. Amen. On your screen right now. If you're watching via stream spot, you can fill out the point of contact, uh, point of decision form. If you are watching via one of our social media platforms, you can direct message us. Amen. Or if you just want that human interaction, you can call the number on your screen and our prayer warriors are standing mind to encourage and to strengthen you. Amen. Let us be the first, amen, to walk with you in your journey with the Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Put those blessed hands together and give God the praise for all of those who we believe will come. Amen.
Amen and amen. We're preparing now uh, for a time of corporate prayer. Thank you so much, altar workers. We're preparing now for a time of corporate prayer. While you are standing, Deacon Domin is coming, and he's preparing uh, to pray with and for us uh, on this morning. As he comes, uh, many of you are already aware uh, that we need to be much in prayer, amen, for the Evans family. We need to be much in prayer for the Evans family family. Many of you are aware uh, that Brother Philip Evans went home to be with the Lord on yesterday. Amen. And certainly uh, Deacon Wari Evans and Miss Marie and that entire family needs our prayers. I can't hear nobody. I said they need our prayers. So please be in prayer uh, for the Evans family. And that's not the only family that needs prayer. Amen. And I'm sure that there are names and, and, and those that you know. Amen that are in need of prayer. Wherever you are, will you just whisper that name and whisper that situation to the Lord even right now? Just whisper it to the Lord even right now. Just whisper it to the Lord even right now. Yes, Lord. Somebody said, well, Pastor, nobody heard my request. Nobody heard my name. Nobody heard my situation. The Lord heard it. And the Bible says that his ear is not so heavy that he cannot hear. And his arm is not so short that he cannot say. We still serve the God who hears and answers prayer. I thought I'd have a witness there. I said, we still serve the God who hears and answers prayer. Pray with and for Deacon Dobbin as he comes to lead us to the throne of grace at this time. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we come to you right now as homeless. We know how, God. And we want to take this time to say, Lord, forgive me for anything that's not of you within me. Clean me up, Lord, as I give this prayer, because I don't want to get in the way of speaking to your people, God. Father, we thank you in advance for that. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I come to you, Lord, asking you, God, to stand firm, God, with us, God, as we journey through this life, because, God, this life is filled with ups and downs. Every day is not going to be a Sunday, God, but... Lord, you have declared in your word that you would never leave us and you would never forsake us. That, God, if we would just continue to trust in you, as the word of God said, uh, trust in you with all our heart. Lean not into our own understanding and in all our ways acknowledge you and you will direct our path. God, we just say this morning, God, thank you for being a God that would never leave us and would never forsake us. Because in this life, God, there are many trials that will come upon us, God. But you have said in your word that many are the afflictions of the righteous. But you've also said that you would deliver us from them all. So, God, we trust in you today. Even though our hearts are heavy, God, from the things of life and the trials that have come upon us, God, we still trust you. Because our strength is in you. Our reward is in you for faithfulness for, towards you. Because, God, you would have us to be faithful. Oh, God, help us to not lean to our own understanding. Help us to look to the hills for which cometh our help. Because, God, all of our help cometh from the Lord. And, Lord, you are our God. You have given us Jesus Christ, the Savior, the one who gave his life, God, that we might have right to the tree of life, that we would have the privilege to pray to you, God, and to make our petitions known. And today, God, we lay those petitions at your throne, God. And Lord, as we stand in our places, God, we're not able to come around the altar as we have in times past. That day will come. But God, right now, we stand right where we are. And we stand as though we stand before your throne with you sitting at the right hand of God. And God, we know that when you stand there, God, you are there for a purpose. And your purpose is to make our requests made known unto God. So we give it to God, Jesus, this morning, knowing that he's faithful and just to stand for us, God, and to say, Lord, bless them.
for what they have need of. If they need a financial blessing, bless them financially. If they need encouragement, God encourage their hearts. And God, but whatever it is, we see him at your right hand, God. And we're willing to trust him and give all things over to him. Because God, without him, we can do nothing. And we give all our trust to him. God, these are difficult days right now that we're going through. And we know even though we don't see it fully, you're doing a wonderful, marvelous work in us. The only thing that you require is that we walk by faith and not by sight and not lean to our own understanding. But look to the hills for which all our help coming from. Everything that we have, everything that we do is because of you. And we thank you for the strength that you give, especially when we're weak. And we don't know sometime what tomorrow is going to bring. But God, when we know that when we rise up from our beds of affliction, we give you the praise. When we come through our trials of death, Lord, we give you the praise. When we come through that job, God, that we've suffered through and victory comes, God, and we don't no longer have to worry, we give you praise. God, we thank you for everything that we have, God. Continue to bless us, God. And Lord, I lift up those going through bereavement. God, give them the comfort. Give them the peace. Give them the strength to hold on to your own unchanging hand. Because if we hold on to your hand, we'll find peace. If we hold on to your hand, we'll find strength. If we hold on to your hand, God, we'll make it through. So God, until that time come, wrap your loving arms around them, God. And encourage their hearts, encourage their minds, and give them everything that they have need of, God. And they'll praise your name. Because only you can get us through those times. God, we thank you for that, Lord. And God, I, I want to send a, a, bless, a prayer down to New Orleans, God, down to the Gulf Coast, God. Those people who have made it through the flood, those who had to run for their lives, God, and now they turn back and everything that they have is gone. Let them look to you, God, and know, God, that you have not forsaken them. That, God, you're still right there. And as in times past, that's the thing that we can lean on. God, in times past, we forget sometimes what you've already done. And Lord knows if you've done it before, you'll do it again. And I thank you for what you're going to do for those people. I thank you what you're going to do for the ones up north in the New Jersey area and all around those areas, God, where that flood came through and it shook their lives because it shook them to the Lord. They can look to you, God. And turn to you and know where their strength comes from. God, help them. Give them everything that they have need of. And God, we'll just so be so careful to continue to praise your name. And another thing, God, let the house of God pray. God, let us be a praying house of God. Let us be a praying people. Let us pray for those who are going through. Let us pray for those who are struggling. Let us pray for those, God, who are hooked on drugs. Let us pray for those that are behind prison bars. Let us pray for those who are standing on the street corners, God, begging for food. Let us become a praying church. And when we pray, let our hearts be tender towards them, God, because except for the grace of God, it could be us. So, God, we thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. I thank you for this man of God that have been sent our way. I thank you for sending him away, God. And I thank you for him spending time with his wife, God. And, and Lord, we just know, God, that that's all a part of your plan. That because, God, if he don't get away, Lord, he can lose his strength. And, God, we want him to go find that strength. We want him to stay strong. We want him to be built up. We want you to keep his wife strong. We want you to keep their love strong. God, I thank you for them getting away. And God, I thank you that we know how to act when he's gone. God, we just ask right now, God, as we can, uh, begin to close this prayer, that you look in our hearts. And God, if it's anything in that is not of you, in the name of Jesus, help us to remove it. That we might serve you in spirit, in truth, in love, in kindness, and in one accord, because that's what you want for Springfield. You want us to be a church that's on one accord, on fire, in love, walking and marching towards you for the kingdom of God. And God, we're going to do it because, God, you're going to bring it to pass in us. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what's going to be, that you're gonna, what you're going to do for us throughout this week. And God, we'll just be so ever careful, Lord, to give your name the praise.
the glory and the honor because it's all about you and it is in your son Jesus name we pray amen and amen If you're in the sanctuary, you may be seated. At this time, we're preparing our hearts and our minds to commune with the Lord. We trust that our deacons have served you as you have entered into the sanctuary or into the multi-purpose center. Uh, we trust that you have already received your communion uh, packet. And as you search to find them now, we're going to prepare our hearts and our minds uh, to be blessed by the ministry of music that would help us to get into a mindset of being able to remember the Lord.
feels like a good place to give God praise right there. Will you help me praise God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, our deacon chairman is coming, and he is going to bring the communion elements. And the reason why this is important, brothers and sisters, is because it symbolizes the relationship between the pastor and the people. And as our deacon chairman comes, bringing the communion elements, he is representing the people of God here at the Springfield Baptist Church and the sacred relationship of those who come and are members of this church that are a part of what God is doing. And this beautiful exchange that we now shall have where the pastor serves the deacon, and the deacon serves the pastor, is symbolic of the mutual love, adoration, and service that should happen between the pastor and people. Our communion scripture today will be taken from 1 John chapter number 4 and beginning with verse number 8. There the Bible says, the one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this, the love of God was manifest in us, that God sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Heads bowed, eyes closed, let's pray as we bless these communion elements. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this sacred moment to remember you. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and all that this moment represents. Your Bible tells us, God, that as often as we do this, we should remember you. And so, Lord, we come to remember you today. And as we remember you, we remember your broken body, which represents, God, the endurance that you have for, our, for your people. And we remember this blood that was shed, this wine that we have that represents your shed blood. And God, as we come today to partake of these elements, I pray that we would 
not eat or drink damnation unto ourselves, but that God, as we eat and drink, we would eat and drink health and wholeness and faith and blessings and prosperity as we remember you. We give you praise for all that has been done and said in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'm going to ask at this time that any deacons who are in the sanctuary, if you would stand with us as we partake of communion together. Any deacons that are in the multi-purpose center, if you would stand with us as we partake of communion together. For I have received of the Lord that which also I have delivered unto you, the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. You may eat. In like manner, he took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. You may drink. Lord, have mercy upon us. And the Bible says that they sang a hymn and went out into the Mount of Olives. Will you stand with me as we prepare to be dismissed? Amen. 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 You're you going to make me do it by myself. What a fellowship. Help me sing. What a joy. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, what a blessing. And what a peace of mind. Leaning on the everlasting to the Lord to be dismissed. Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt. Now, God, as we prepare to leave this place, but never your presence, go with us and stand by us until we all meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you're watching online, as usual, keep the faith, stay safe, wear a wash and wait. We absolutely love you. We'll see you soon.